What is going on YouTube, Kronos here, and welcome back to another PSO2 video. So today's video is just going to be kind of, a, another, I guess a PSA would be a good way to put it. The uh, NGS website just launched for the PSO2 NGS website. So this is mostly going to include closed beta stuff. It's kind of the closed beta official website itself. I'm not sure if they're going to be transitioning to this website moving forward, but I figured I'd go through it with you guys, show you what's up, you know, give my uh, little thoughts here and there and kind of go forward from there. But real quick, guys, I do content over here on YouTube daily. It'd be super, super awesome if you guys were to like the video and uh, of course, subscribe if you want to keep up with more content if you're new. Anyway, let's jump into this. So you just have PS or just the website itself is ngs.ps2.com. Again, this is mostly used right now for the beta testing stuff. If you were here earlier in the day, I know the news section of this site was uh, very broken. I imagine it's because everyone was trying to figure out what was going on and to sign up for the beta. Um, if you're watching this video as of right now, the beta signups are still open and they um, they have fixed the issue with the Xbox Insider app. So that's super cool there. And a lot of us were sitting there for hours upon hours clicking, trying to get into the actual website or trying to get into the actual app itself. But uh, anyway, they do give us some information. Let's go ahead and pop this up really quick. Just to let you know how to enter into the beta itself. Again, this isn't really a beta video specifically, but this just, you know, figured we cover it really quick at the start, just so you have it here. We've got system requirements, how to apply, and then about the closed beta test itself. This does confirm, by the way, that this will be only for the PC. It does show on here. I don't remember exactly where, but it is on here as well. One cool thing to note is at the start of all tests, all participant players will receive 20,000 AC and 5,000 SG. Feel free to use this content as items available, purchase AC and SG however you like during the test. The prices for content and items purchased by AC and SG are tentative, meaning we don't know if they're going to change, they're going to be the same. Just so you guys are aware, this stuff is all, again, it's a beta test, it's subject to change. That much, that much should be obvious, it should be kind of like ingrained in your brains. Um, testing the fundamental overall game systems, testing game pro Test fundamental game progression such as character creation, combat action, enemies, blah, 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 testing develop, or testing fundamental game progression since all players starting the game creating new characters so this does confirm that we will not be connected to our pso2 characters which does suck really bad i kind of wanted to be connected to my pso2 character i didn't want to have to create a new character again but this is where we are uh operation server stress verification operation verification server network stress test with multiplayer environments and then arcs cache star gem operation test so that's kind of the overall testing of the beta itself we'll have to see where we go from there. Um, I'm trying to think of the important stuff, mess with PS development team. I just you know, suggest reading through it, all that good stuff. And then of course, how to sign up for the closed beta. So this lets us know what the closed beta is going to be for. Now, granted, a lot of this seems like almost a copy and paste of what was on the um, the Japanese closed beta. So some people are like concerned that maybe it's, you know, a uh, a just direct translation that hasn't been updated for what the beta actually is going to be. So I wouldn't take this as like, you know, set in stone exactly what the beta is going to be, you know, tomorrow morning or by the time this video comes out, probably should already be available. Um, we should be getting a, um, oh, what is it called? A prologue three to see more stuff about PSO2 NGS. So we'll have to go from there. And yes, for those of you guys who are abbreviating PSO2 NG, um, abbreviated as PSO2 NGS, this isn't something we just made up. They actually, you know, it's, it's official NGS. And you use your first a new game, by the way. So I'm pretty sure they don't want to use that. Anyway, let's uh, let's actually build what the website is that uh, we've uh, rambled on for a little bit. Um, so we have the launch test announcements. We have like a news page itself tells us about what's going on, gives us a link to sign up for the closed beta test. Um, game overview stuff. So this is kind of cool. This shows off the introduction to the world itself. We're fighting against dolls. Let's say arcs still. These brave royal. Okay, so huh? interesting, interesting. It still says arcs, but um. We get official names, translations, things of that sort. First place is still called Central City. So, character creation information. There's all character creation videos. Shows off an English translated UI, which I haven't looked at yet. I'm going to look at this. I don't remember seeing an English translated UI here. Um, I'll probably check that out a little bit later. But if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave links in the video description to uh, the individual videos themselves or just come to the website. Honestly, I, I might just I might forget to do that and just have to come to the website anyway. I'd recommend it. Um, yes, PS2 is going to have open field process. And also, I apologize for the background noise. I have my window open. It's really hot right now <laughs> with all this equipment. So windows going to be open. You might hear some background noise. I apologize in advance. Either way. Um, so it is an open world style ish game, uh, essentially, like they're going to be the entire open map cut into zones and then of course you'll phase into the zone kind of like sharding in uh in world of warcraft if you're familiar with that so that's how that is going to work overall and then it shows off the different types of enemies um 
A lot of them really, really cool, honestly. Different types of alerts. We fought a lot of these enemies in the closed beta test over on, uh, on the Japanese server, so we kind of went with that. But of course, we have photon dash, glides, all that cool thing there. All those cool things there, so. And then, of course, early stage. What is this actually referring to? Oh, yeah, the very beginning of the game. So the new player experience. Honestly, again, I, I, if you guys watch one of my videos, you would know that this is actually really, really well done, in my opinion. If you guys watch the stream, super cool things here. Um, Resta sign does not need to have an E at the end of it, but you know what? Ain't that big a deal. It's one letter, you know, whatever. Cocoons, also very important. Ryuker devices, I'm glad to see these coming back, man. I thought they'd forgotten about what these were. So super cool to see these pop back up. And then again, just more information about kind of the start, the menu, the UI, you know, cool things there. Um, I want to click on like just everything, but I want to go through this in like a cohesive manner. So this is like my first time going through all of this stuff. So I wanted to uh, yeah, kind of go through it with you guys. And this is just game overview. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Manual is probably that's going to have the most content. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> so manual is going to have tons and tons and tons of content. We'll be here for a little bit. I didn't really plan on how long this video was going to be. And honestly, I'm okay with it being a little bit longer of a video. But anyway, so getting started, just going to talk about updating graphics drivers, all that good stuff. Nothing too crazy there, so we don't need to worry about that. Game start. Let's see. Uh, title screen, login menu. Didn't know why this. Oh, yeah, images from a product currently under development. Yeah, okay. Not sure why this needed to be its own little section, but you know what? Teach is their own. Maybe it's like a drop down. Yeah, if anyone from the PSO2 teams watch this, maybe like you know, a little drop down there instead of like having to swap pages every single time. Might be a little bit more in inclusive, middle, intuitive is the word I'm looking for here. Uh, then another menu showing off exactly what the menu is going to look like. Check your login history, login date, a linked IP address, and various other status regarding login. So that's kind of cool. See if anyone's logged into your account from any other locations. It's kind of important there too. Account sharing, big no no. Uh, character creation. So go through the character creation stuff. This is actually kind of cool. So one thing I don't know about is, I'm not sure, I guess it doesn't make a difference in NGS since, uh, yeah, I guess since you can swap around body types, things like that. I know in PS2 base game, it's kind of weird because race selection did affect your stats to an extent. And then now, or at least over on the JP servers, they've got the update where you're able to, uh, to use pretty much any body type or any um, combination of like whatever you'd like. And I, it's kind of weird because like if you made a uh if you made a a min maxed race that you really really like um you can still go with looks that you, you care about you don't have to worry about anything like that so that's kind of interesting to think about i know it's not gonna matter in ngs but it's kind of base interesting uh, interesting optimization for base pso2 um and then of course uh, controls keyboard controls different things about like how to edit all that good stuff so this is all you know pretty straightforward pretty basic so you can see the classes you can select at the very start and then kind of go forward from there let's see real quick I wonder, is this the same set of classes that you were able to select in base PS2's character creator? I don't know if you could select Bouncer. No, you could select Bouncer at the start. You couldn't select some other classes. I can't remember exactly which ones. I think it actually was these classes you couldn't select before. Maybe you had to switch to them. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, it could have been updated, honestly. So I really, you know, it's been a long time since I've been the regular character creator in PSO2. So uh, yeah, at least I don't spend much time in there for the few times that I had to go back there to create alts. So. A character creation, how to navigate the menu. So this actually will show us probably some of the menu stuff here. It's kind of interesting. Um, okay, so menu, pretty standard. F1, escape, home, start. Okay, cool, cool. I'm sure other people are going through this, so it's probably going to take a while to load. I'm actually loading this up on my gaming PC, which has pretty good, pretty decent internet, so shouldn't take too long to load anything here. Uh, cool, so show us a little bit of information. Shows the premium. Okay, cool. AC, star gems. That's pretty, pretty part of the course what we're, look, we're used to seeing here. One cool thing to note is that you can cycle through these different inventories and um, actually like while you're in town, you can access all the different types of inventories you have, including your storages, which is really, really dope. Uh, notification icon, letting you know where to go, I think is what they're trying to. Yeah, OK. Oh, no, there's right here. OK, so instead of being it way, way up at the top of the screen, it's right here, which is kind of dope. Um, inventory stuff. So. I mentioned this during the beta. There's actually, so this is a convert to cash option. So basically you can vendor things from anywhere. Um, I'm not sure if it also like works with like if selling at a vendor is you know, going to get you more money or if this is the same, but you guys don't discard anything anymore. It actually just converts to cash. So super cool there. Throw it directly in Enmaceta. Maybe it should say convert in Enmaceta in my opinion, but I mean, convert to cash is like whatever. We know, we all know exactly what it means, right? So there's cool things there. Um, and then of course it just goes through each of the, uh, UI different situation trying to see if there's anything interesting in here 
Uh, no, that's basically the same stuff that we're used to seeing. Tasks are basically our um, our client orders, more or less. Uh, we have main, dailies, weeklies, uh, side, limited time ones in progress. And of course, you can get completed to see what you've already done. Um, maybe you have a friend that's working on something that you've already done and they're curious about what they're going to have to do next. You might be able to pull it up for them, that sort of thing. Uh, world map, communications, uh, change leader, remove from party, abandon quest. All these things are pretty self-explanatory. They're kind of, you know, the standard here as far as menu stuff goes along. So we're not going to spend too much time on it. Let's take a look at, of course, the quick menu is basically just still the quick menu. I don't think there's anything crazy here. Take a look real quick. Uh, no, there's nothing insane on in the quick menu itself. It's pretty standard part for the course. Quick menu that we're used to in PSO2. Uh, weapons and armor. So this will be an interesting one to look at. So you can actually see some names for stuff. Prim knuckles, it looks like. They're going to be called the, the prim weapons of the one stars of that version type, it looks like. Um, sub palettes are pretty standard. Looks like books. Yep. Okay. And then photon arts, techniques, and class skills. Okay, so that's will be restricted to sub palettes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, again, pretty standard stuff. What we're basically more or less used to seeing here. Uh, setting your class. So this is the class change counter. I'm assuming they're going to show us. Oh no, that shows the classes. <laughs> I thought that would show us the class change counter since it's setting your class. One quick tip if you're watching this video all the way up to this point, um, when you first start, you only have a, like a standard class. I'm not sure if they're going to have the whole unlock system again like you used to, but it's going to have you go back to the class counter at a certain point, I believe, during the setup. Um, set a subclass. If you don't go back to the class counter, they don't make you go back to the class counter, go to it anyway. Set a subclass. You'll be able to do that from very, very start. So very important for leveling. <laughs> show off some pretty cool stuff here. Uh, yeah, so deal high damage through various actions depending upon the battle situation. What sets the class apart is you can link PAs, you can link each PA attack with a separate attack or see the attack through to its end. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the PAs for Knuckles, at least when I played them, um, they're kind of like two-parter almost, that they had a first portion to it, and then the second part would be kind of the commitment part to it, or you could either step out of it, um, cancel out of it, or you could uh, do another PA to link into a different PA itself automatically. So that's kind of a cool part of it, and then of course it just shows each of the classes kind of what they do. Um, it's, I love how Tekkers is an explosion. You look at Forest. Forest is just casting lightning. Tekker literally freaking boom. Like what? Okay, that's fine. Moving on. Uh, okay, main and subclass. There are two classes. Main and subclass. Your main class determines what weapons are available. And the corresponding photon arts, techniques, class skills can be used. Setting a subclass enables you to use the corresponding weapons, photon arts, and techniques. Some of the class skills can be also be used. Experience can be earned for both classes. However, experience earned for the subclass will be lower than that of the main class. Doesn't say the exact amount, but yeah, go to see. Uh, looks like. Hang on. Can I? Let me. I'm gonna back and then. Okay. So this all. This is all under the same section. I can actually go through it this way. Uh, they're talking about tasks. So tasks are client orders. Really simple, very straightforward from here. It's kind of cool that they do pop up on the side here, but I do want to make sure that you're able to see multiple tasks. That's probably, that's actually feedback that I offered as well as like seeing multiple tasks at one time would be super, super dope. That way you can kind of like, you know, and then decide which one you're actually tracking. Yeah, that'd be the good one to do. Um, weapon and unit enhancements. Uh, I mean, that's pretty standard. This is going to be the weapon item lab. It's probably the place some people are going to spend the most time reading up about. Um, I did record a video not too long ago talking about how I felt about the, uh, the enhancement system. So we'll have to see how that goes, but you know, limit breaking weapons and units have their enhancement limit cap. When you limit break, you can increase the enhancement limit. You'll need materials and enemies at a limit break. There are caps for enhancement limit. Yes. So I know this is a question some people had and they were talking about the limit breaking. So being able to take your weapons and make them as strong as like a tier above them. Um, it's just that it's like a tier above. It doesn't allow you to consistently keep going over and over and over again with consistent limit breaks. It does cap. So you will have to still upgrade your weapons. You will still have to upgrade your units. You can't just sit with one stars forever. It's kind of like allowing the one star to be as strong as the two star and then allowing the two star to be as strong as the three star, so on and so forth going upward that way when the exact new weapon comes out you're not exactly stuck um i think it's kind of interesting um some weapons like might have interesting effects that you know a new weapon has a better effect in or not a better effect so a new weapon has more stats but their effect is kind of like weaker for your class so maybe you don't care as much about it but it, again it's one of the situations but it just it really depends right you have to see how they decide to balance that out i feel like with this the system being available for all weapons it doesn't really make it that unique of a system um, it's kind of cool, but like the the meta, uh, why did I stutter for a second? I couldn't speak. The meta is going to become, uh, you know, of course, get your weapon capped. And then like, if it can be limit broken, limit break it as well. It's going to depend on like, yeah, if you can limit break the weapon in the first place, maybe like certain weapons at top tier can't be limit broken. 
and then like when the new weapon comes out the lower tier weapon can be limit broken i'm not sure how that's going to work but like it's you know it just depends really on what they decide to do how the system's going to work overall or how they decide to balance it the fixing augments we talked about you know my my thoughts on that super super awesome um you can increase your chances fix yeah of course yeah so augments can be added to do weapons units i guess not everyone knows about this so i'll, I'll talk about it a little bit um you will need augment capsules and end meseta for fixing augments you can increase your chances of success for fixing augments by consuming the same capsule multiple times it's thus cap up to a cap of 10 at least it did in the beta um, essentially what it is is like say you have a skill like power one if you want to attach that to your weapon all weapons and armor when they drop when you buy them when you get them all zero out of ten or i'm sorry zero out of whatever slots you have available for it the slots can go up based on of course the rarity of the weapon the uh, and how far it's upgraded and when you're augmenting things to the weapon itself you're using capsules capsules have a percent chance of applying and at least i know from during the beta they maxed out at 10 capsules being able to be used per setup so like say you were adding power one you'd be able to use 10 power one capsules power one capsules at a 10 percent chance of a fixing you could use 10 of them for 100 percent chance you could drop down to nine for 90 percent chance whatever you wanted to do and then after you chose all the capsules you're going to use it took you to another screen where you then attach the item or attach the affix or choose them to attach to your actual weapon or unit so with that system i talked about like the possibility of combining certain things so on and so forth being available for you and then of course you know there's still a bit of rng involved yeah as as most upgrade systems in this style of game have there's a bit of rng that's still involved into it so we'll have to see um weapon potentials are separated they kind of work similar to the way old school weapons used to work in pso2 in a sense but they do unlock on their own in their own leveling area so you have to do up yeah you have to upgrade them separate of just leveling up your weapons and then of course the multi-weapon system multi-weapons have two different abilities such, or sorry multi-weapons have two different abilities such as sword and rifle together weapon action from each weapon can be registered in one palette the following items are required multi-weapon or the following items are required for multi-weapon utilization that's weapon materials material items and then maceta they're not and of course we don't have everything here that we need for all the process itself but they will update it as it becomes available but weapons base have to be the same type. So I learned that the hard way in the beta, there were two types of weapons and I tried to combine the level, the uh, three star versions and it turns out that they were two separate types of weapons and they can be combined. I had to go to the two star version to be able to do that. So be careful to make the same mistake I did with upgrading two separate weapons thinking they need to be the same. And of course, battle power, not a lot of information on this, but battle power gauges the overall ability of the player status, equipped items. A certain battle power will be required participating in urgent quests and more. I know the base one was like 950 for the one that we had so you know that might be a goal to get in the beta um mags a feature called active sonar is installed in the mags they can explore undiscovered cocoons and towers for us so mags are going to be different they're not really going to play into our stats they just are kind of helpful tools um quick cook if you guys are a uh players of monster hunter oh that's a little bit loud sorry about that if you guys are players of monster hunter um basically food from like monster hunter food buffs cool things like that can be cooked at reuker devices or the food staff in towns and of course, urgent quests are still urgent quests. The in-game announced 15 minutes ahead of time. You go to the area itself, or I mean, you can like click on it from like in town, basically, and uh, you'll be able to join into the actual urgent quest itself with the party and uh, go forward from there. Kind of similar to you normally would in base PSO2. And then we have combat stuff. This gives us the basics for combat. This one, we're not going to go too heavily deep into. We're already like 20 minutes into this video. I want to get this at least less than 30 if possible. But, um, Cool things to note um i know some people were concerned about uh the no just attacking sort of thing again i've never paid attention to my animations more than without just attacks because now i don't have to search for like a little circle on my character or it's not like you know this cur cir giant circle that's over half of my character i actually pay attention to the animation to know when i need to hit the button you can spam a bit but there is still like you know some things you don't want to spam you want to be well aware of where you are in your animations and not get absolutely bought especially in melee a uh, lock-on system is it's still lock-on um so yeah i mean they have like a soft lock on system that you can like, you don't have to actually lock on your target but it's like still it's not it's not fantastic i think still needs a bit of work but we'll have to see photon arts are still photon arts pretty dope techniques are still techniques they do work a little bit different some of them work a bit different so i would check out the technique individually but text is still text pretty simple there charging text is still charging text i knew that i think they change the tech itself when you charge it overall I'm um, just being a more powerful version. So again, you want to check that on an individual basis with someone who actually plays tech based classes because I don't um, sub palette is basically still the same sub palette itself. You can still use items, still use techniques. You can still use photon arts off of it. You can still use a lot of things off of it. So 
Pretty cool there. Recovering photon points. So this is actually pretty interesting. So using your photon arts and techniques into PP, PP recovers over time. You can recover it while hitting enemies with a normal attack. You cannot recover this while photon dashing. You actually do not recover any PP while photon dashing. So what I found is with really, really high paced combat while you're you know, sprinting after your enemy, jumping from area to area, especially if you're playing melee, you do not recover any PP unless you are normal attacking. So normal attacking does become kind of more important overall or parrying something. And of course, you know, the reposter, the follow-up attack afterwards. So that does become a bit more thing we have to get used to since you know you really don't have the ability to not recover PP in most situations unless you're using um you know, movement tech. I guess technically since photon art or photon dashing is kind of like movement tech in a sense, it does you know make sense in that situation, but we'll have to see how that works out. Sidestep is pretty simple. It's just our our, our step. Yeah, you know, we just we step. We have a step normal. Photon dash we just talked about is uh Holding down the dash when you press it allows you to uh, start, you know, running. You move faster than normal. You can let it go after that, and then you press a normal attack. You can do a photon dash. You can do a photon dash attack. So, kind of like a step attack, except you know, a dash attack instead. You know, crazy jumping, wall kicking, photon glide, and weapon action. Weapon action is pretty standard. Um, photon glide again, fairly standard. It's just jump and hold down the jump button to glide. That was kind of weird for me at least at first, but you get used to it overall. I'm I offered feedback as far as like you know maybe changing that into pressing jump you know a third time, but I guess that would also remove the ability to uh, time your double jump. So I guess that's a bit more intuitive there in that situation. Um, wall kicking. So this is the one thing I did have an issue with. You can only wall kick once off of a uh, off of a jump and a glide, which I don't really like too much. Um, I wish you could wall kick at least a few times. Or wall kick indefinitely. I mean, like, yeah, you'd be able to climb like crazy, but in reality, it would still be kind of limited by, you know, certain pieces of like cliffs being in the way, so on and so forth. So I would like to see wall kicking be like, you know, a bit expanded on a bit more, like just allow us to wall kick like more. Be great, especially for players that are playing primarily melee based classes, because trying to get up to some of those like heights on uh, certain enemies could be kind of a pain. Or just let us, you know, wall kick off of the enemies too. That'd be nice. <laughs> um how to use pallets pallets are exactly the same as pso2 they're, they're basically the same so don't worry about that photon blasts photon blasts are kind of like just special attacks think of them closer to like cpas than actual photon blasts um they change based on your weapon and uh they're pretty cool uh they do have to build up so they do build up like a photon blast gauge um but again they, their uses feel more akin to like a cpa or a complex pa or build up pa if you play it on global this is just a list of the enemies we're fighting we're basically fighting dolls instead of fighting uh what is it? I was going to say Darkers, but technically they're called uh, the Fall Spawn. Fall Spawn, that's right. Called Fall Spawn. So doll, dolls are kind of our primary thing here. It's, they're still calling us Arcs. So that has something to do with the story. We'll have, the story, we'll have to figure that out. Because during the uh, the announcement, they referred to us as um, like these special people that are just kind of falling from the sky, essentially. I'll we'll find out more about that later. Altars, super cool enemies. They actually change during the night is when they're stronger and they glow. Uh, rare enemies are just straight up gold. And they are like, even the docile level one enemies like they show here can show up as gold. You get more experience and uh, I guess it increases like your PSE levels and stuff like that when they when you kill them. Um, enhanced enemies. Enhanced enemies have a body part, have a body part called enhancer, which allows them to enhance themselves. Enhance, enhance, enhance. Basically break this thing first and then you can fight them because they have a shield up everywhere else. They don't take any damage. Elemental weakness. Each technique has one of the three elemental weak, uh, three elements, fire, ice, and lightning. Now, the interesting thing, they don't mention any other elements here. I'm not sure if it means that they're not going to be any other elements or those elements are going to be special, possibly. We'll have to see. The maze will go into a special debuff state called elemental debuff, so you can continue attacking using their elemental weakness. Again, elements are not going to be on melee weapons or ranged weapons. They're only on techniques. So only classes that have access to techniques will be able to use elemental weakness, weaknesses. And the weak point, some enemies have weak points. When you attack the weak point, the damage display will turn blue. You can dish out more damage. Some enemies will go into a special debuff state called physical debuffs if you attack their weak points. Um, a lot of us can these to like crits because it seemed like when you crit, it also turned blue. So I'm not sure if like weak points are just auto crits. We'll have to figure out how that works out. And of course, then the field. So this is like, I know a lot of people were really concerned that like, you know, leveling took a really long time. It's part of why um, they're exploration sectors and combat sectors. Our only combat sector we had in the beta during CBT2 over on the Japanese servers was like level five. Um, combat sectors, like, let me see, did I talk about it here? Ren Icon is next energy sector, combat sectors. Yeah, okay, so enemies tend to spawn there more often. Um, and like, boss enemies tend to spawn there more often itself. 
as well as just getting more experience overall. These combat sectors are also only eight man, um, so they're not the they're not the thirty two man exploration centers of the thirty two man um, areas. But basically, this is usually where you're gonna go to like I don't want to say like where you're gonna go to level, but like if you're gonna go to fight something, this is gonna kind of be like the, the general area that you're gonna be going to is combat sectors. We didn't have appropriately leveled combat sectors. We had like one or two, and I got like level one and level five. We had a level in the exploration sectors, which aren't really generally set for leveling. It's more about exploration, gathering materials. But enemies do spawn in those areas, like high-level boss enemies can spawn in those areas as well, and we got a lot of them spawning there. So we were doing like level 10 exploration zones to get all the way up to level 15, which is why it took so long to level in the beta. So I know some people saw that, they were concerned, that's the only reason why. It was just we didn't have the appropriate level zones. When the game comes out, I'm sure that's not going to be an issue. Also, we have our Ryuker devices back. Ryuker devices are dope. You use them for teleporting. You can use them to like access your storage out in the field. You can use them to transfer between blocks. There's also our block transfer thing, so you know, no more elevator. Um, and then you can teleport directly to them as well. So teleporting, you don't have to teleport from them. You can if you want to. There's no reason to. You can just open your map and teleport. Um, but you teleport to these individual zones. So it's good to pick up your Reeker devices. Um, Rester signs and Reverse signs. Um, Rester signs are just heals. Reverse signs are just res everyone. So we'll have to see how these work out. I think they scale to like your HP values. But again, it was something like we picked up some of these during the beta and just kind of used them as you went along. No animation or very little animation to these. So, you know, we'll have to see. Um, good thing is, is that people were like resing a lot more <laughs> during the beta. So that was kind of cool. But uh, either way, gathering stuff. So we have gathering materials are just going to be smashing like little little chunks of stuff. Pick up everything, like everything you see, pick it all up. Seriously, if there's ever a time to have material storage, get it now. <laughs> Environmental changes over time. So weather stuff, pretty cool. The weather does actually affect certain enemy spawns. So that was pretty cool. Data pods kind of work the same way than before. Updrafters are basically ways of like flying. Whenever you photon glide into them, you like fly up in the air. So pretty cool there. PSC, but there's photon sensitive effects. Level goes up when you defeat enemies in combat sectors or complete trials. The PSC level increases also. Also increases spawn rates of your enemies and triggers PSC burst when the level reaches maximum. During PSC burst, multiple enemies will swarm you and a boss enemy will appear at the end. So it's like a it's like an event essentially. It's a little bit different than beforehand. You get a boss at the very end of it, tons of enemies appear. And uh, yeah, we don't have to ask or, or think what causes PSC to go up. It just says it right here for us. Trials. Trials are just kind of like uh, random events that pop up in combat or uh, combat exploration zones. I'm sorry, combat zones or exploration zones. Um, it could be like suppressing enemies, you know, defending some certain area itself. Yes, the guy that, you know, couldn't fly the Ark's plane still can't fly the Ark's plane, but this time it is completely computerized and they still messed it up. So either way, it still pops up. <laughs> kind of funny there um region mags i feel like there's an entire video they could put together about region mags itself and i'm probably going to do one of them in the future itself but know that region mag is super cool offer buffs to the entire area and you feed them items different types of item containers super dope um we have white red and gold attack arcs or sorry attack containers to break them reveal items number of red item containers of a spawn are limited per account so you can't get a ton of these per day i think they said these were limited but i feel like we found them consistently um gold ones usually have like money or rare items and then like the white ones are kind of standard and then of course we have controls let me just go ahead and close that and we can close this real quick and controls are just that they're just controls i mean this one's pretty self-explanatory you guys can kind of go through these on your own you can see the in-game screen itself and can see the ui yeah the ui looks kind of clean I'm, I'm like a fan of the ui the way it looks at the moment i do want a bit more customization i'm moving things around but again you know things to offer information to provide so enemy information pop up here you see more enemy information here as well player information all that good stuff so nothing too crazy here you also see like the field information stuff in the top left hand corner i believe yeah that's supposed to be showing off but yeah that's really about it when it comes to this website there's a forum that takes you to the pso2 forum so it's not really like a forum just yet and then a support section that takes you to ps2 support section so anyway guys this was a lot of information. I know I try to go through it as quickly as I could. I don't want to go too much in depth, but of course I tend to ramble on. I can't help myself sometimes. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to toss it a like. It does help me out a whole bunch. Ooh, I almost didn't go into my old spiel. I should, shouldn't I, huh? Yeah. Like on the video is much appreciated and absolved you have for your ad block guilt. They're half is all by subscribing. Both are completely free and they do help me out a ton. If you guys want to keep up with content like this, make sure to click on the bell icon to be notified of videos as they go live or community posts, or join us over on Discord, or follow me over on Twitter for notifications via those two avenues. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Peace out.